Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at the straight Hormuz again, but this time we're going to do it a little differently as we're going to go ahead and use the Shipwreck Naval Miniatures Modern Combat Rules. Um, this is a pretty cool system. This is one of the older systems that I'm aware of other than Harpoon. And uh, basically in this system, everything is handled as if, you know, it's a little longer ranges you have, the scale is a little bit simpler, the rules in general are much much lighter than you're probably used to in some of the other games we've played. It's not necessarily a bad thing, as um, we'll probably find out in this encounter. So in this encounter, we're going to do the same one we did with the other two, so you can see how it comes out. We have the Sovaromenye, which I'm probably mispronouncing. We have the USS Wichita for some reason, and over here we have the Nanuchka. He's back. So uh, we're going to go ahead and see how this game plays out. So take a look at the shipwreck rules themselves. Again, this is great because it's pretty lightweight as far as rules go. They also give you these awesome little like kind of backup little, almost, I like to call them like character sheets slash kind of cheat sheets just to kind of help you out as far as keeping track of everything. And I find these great. I wish more games had these. This would be awesome. So anyway, first things first, we're going to go ahead and uh, do all of our movements. Movement in this game is considered simultaneous. Now here's where it gets interesting. All movement is three inches unless you are in combat, in which case movement goes up to five inches unless you roll below a certain number, above a certain number, as you'll see. You can also declare any aircraft movement or deployment at this time. So um, the opponent, of course, way, way over here, he's going to move his three inches. One inch is a nautical mile, by the way, for those who keep track of scale. So he moves up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move our three inches as well. Again, we can't move any faster or slower. It's kind of interesting how that works out. And we're also going to commit one of our helicopters to the air. This is also a good time, of course, to declare things like if I'm using a radar active, which is usual. Um, our cruise ship has got its navigation radar going. We're also going to go ahead and borrow these icons, by the way, from this the other set, Naval Command, and we're going to say that our Kamal of 25 has also got it. So now what we do is we go ahead and enter into the detection phase. So detection phase is kind of interesting. This is, again, a little different, but it's, it's pretty neat. Basically, in this game, all ranges are broken down into specific bands. So in this case, if you take a look, a very short is considered up to 4 miles, a medium, long, etc. So medium range is up to 25 inches in our case. So we need to see if there's any other ships within 25 inches that we can detect actively. And in this case, there are not. However, if you are using an aircraft, you're allowed to detect up to long range, which is up to 85 inches. So checking at 85, 85 inches comes way, way, way into Iran over here like this. So that's great. So we have a chance of detecting the Nanuchka right away. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So let's see what our modifiers are going to be. So we're detecting, um, is there an EW penalty on the Nanuchka? Let's take a look. He has one in EW, so there is a penalty. So now we're down to an eight up, or an eight down, I should say. Eight down, um, let's see here. Uh, we're making passive detection, so that eight goes to a four. Um, let's see, he was not detected, that goes to three. Now, is there land within four miles? Oh, that's close. I'm going to say there isn't. So that's going to be a four or less required for our Kamal 25 to detect that other ship. And it detects it immediately. That never happens. When I was uh, testing this game out a little earlier, it was literally, they were 10 feet away from each other before anybody actually was able to see anything. So this is already an interesting little switch, uh, twist. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Nanuchka's passive ability. Passive radar detection is considered one range band bigger. So if you're doing a surface radar detection, that would be at 85 inches or less. If you're looking for an air radar, that would be at what range is that? Very long, which is between 85 and 150 miles. So he now gets a shot to try to passively detect both the Kamov 25, which we could have moved, but we're leaving him right there for now, or the USS Wichita. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Our Wichita, by the way, I think has an EW of 1. So let's see what this looks like. So starting with a 9, uh, let's go ahead. Uh, no, <clears throat> attempting to detect snow. Ah, so that becomes an eight. Let's see here. No, eight. Um, no, eight minus four is four. No damage. Um, becomes a three. So uh, yeah, it's a three also for him to detect that ship passively. Eight. No good. 
how about the helicopter? The helicopter in this particular case will start here. Uh, there's no EW. Let's see here. It's minus 4, so it's going to be 5. Minus 1, it's going to be a 4 or less to detect the Kamov. Bingo, Kamov detected. So in this case, again, borrowing the counters from uh, Naval Command here because they're so convenient to use, the radar was passively detected. So that means the Kamov has been detected by uh, the Nanuchka passively. So since enemies have been spotted, we can now change our speed up to the next the uh, five inches, which actually has a really, really cool little rule to it. Um, taking a look, whoa, sorry about that. Uh, scooting down here, uh, moving a uh, very optional rule. You can actually go ahead and see if it's nine and eight. I actually like that rule. So um, we're going to go ahead to the next turn. Nobody's declaring any attacks at this time. Um, I'm going to say the order of uh, engagement, the rules of engagement are that the Russians cannot attack unless they've been attacked first. So this guy, of course, only is aware of the helicopter. So he's not going to be able to attack either one of these ships yet. So we'll kind of have to see how that plays out. So now we go around to the next turn. This is considered a maneuver. This will be a 15 minute. So we're going to go ahead and say we're going to move flank speed. I like this rule. So we need to roll a 9 or less to go flank, which case we make it. So it's going to be 5 inches. There's no rules for turning or anything like that in this game. So we keep things a little bit simpler. Excuse me for moving my little helicopter here. He can move out to about a short range here. So I'm going to put him right here. Good. So this guy's also detected the enemy, which means he's going to come ahead and move five inches forward. Now we go to the detection phase. So um, the only thing that he hasn't detected yet is the Wichita, which is way down here. So he's going to try to do that now. So we're going to go ahead and take a look again. So it's going to be a nine. Remember, passive detection. Nine goes to an eight. Goes to a four goes to a three. So we need a three or less to get a passive lock on the Wichita. We get a four, so no good this turn also. So then we're just going to proceed to another turn. This is another 15 minutes later. Uh, meanwhile, our little helicopter is just going to scoot over here. We're going to go ahead. We need an eight or higher to keep it flank speed. We get a five, so we're able to keep flank speed going, even though I don't think that particular ship can go that speed. We're going to ignore that. Meanwhile, these guys are also going to speed up the flank speed. He needs an eight or better. He gets a two. He's going to kind of set himself up in that classic little kind of right turn here. And he's going to move right about right there. Okay, so that's the end of that turn. So now another 15 minutes has gone by. And now we're going to go ahead and check our detection. So um, detection always comes after movement, by the way, in case you've gotten confused, like I almost did. He's going to, again, attempt to detect the Wichita based on its active radar emissions. He needs a three. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look. So nine, uh, eight, four. Yes, he's going to need a three or less. Six. So no passive detection yet. So now we move to the next phase. Another 15 minutes later, I'm just going to kind of have him scoot around. I don't want to get too close. So now we're going to go ahead and um, we need a seven or better to keep that flank speed up to try to get us out of the straight here. So that's a six. So we managed to keep it going. We're going to move another five inches here. That's a heck of a move in 15 minutes. Uh, he also needs a six to keep his uh, sprint up. He gets a one, no problem. Going to be a little loosey-goosey here, but you have the idea. Now he's going to again attempt to detect that passive radar on the Wichita. He needs a three or less. One. Okay. Things just got interesting. He is now detected, which means we can now do a combat phase. Whoa, whoa, what's that mean? A combat turn. If you have a regular movement turn, there's no shooting or anything. You have your detection turn. This basically loops around. A combat turn sequence, all of a sudden everything changes. Now airplanes can move, um, things can attack, missiles can be launched, and it basically keeps going around and around and around until people decide that the combat turns over. So in this particular case, um, it would be normally simultaneous, which is, um, some people find that a little, again, that's kind of interesting how that plays, but that's, you know, it, it definitely makes things pretty straightforward. It also kind of keeps things honest as you'll see so anyway uh, the Nanuchka is going to attack the um, target just spotted the Wichita using a passive lock so let's see what we have for weapons down here go ahead and open this up we have a triple SSN 9 um, two of those so we have six of these siren missiles that we can put to use here and uh, we're going to attack with all six of them so to do that attack I'm actually just going to grab a dice I'm going to change its color to this bright red 
and I'm going to say that they got to this point right here. Now, the Wichita has got no chaff or anything like that, but the uh, Sovremenia has the ability to try to intercept. The interesting thing is, if you look at the character card, this uh, the ship card, it actually does have a phalanx system. It also has a rim 7 arm and stuff like that, but we're going to ignore that and pretend that uh, maybe he forgot to buy ammunition that week. So, uh, coming back here, this guy gets a shot at trying to block six incoming missiles from the Nanuchka over here. Um, the thing with the missiles, though, is when they're launched, um, they are only going to be traveling one of these range bands basically per moment. So now, if you remember, um, this guy did not have his active radar on. So these missiles get launched. This guy will immediately, um, he's allowed to detect these active missiles as they're en route each time they move to a different range band band. Now, this is a little difficult because um, your 9 to detect the missiles is actually significantly less because now it's minus 1 to an 8. Uh, scrolling down here as well, um, you're also going to be um, down to a 7 to try to detect those incoming missiles. If he doesn't detect these incoming missiles, there's no way that he's going to get his active radar online. So this is really critical that he detects that missile on the way in, which he does. So he's going to quickly call the South Romania and say, get your radar online, we're in trouble. But his radar doesn't come online until these missiles move to the next range band, which would put them at the, uh, um, let's see, medium range here. Is that medium? Checking the range is between 25 miles. It was actually launched at long range, so it moved to medium range. Okay, so these would be at the medium range bracket, which would be 12 nautical miles away. And now we can go ahead and start attacking them. So um, had the radar not spotted the missiles, they could have moved to short and then very short and then gone ahead and done its attack. But luckily, um, because things actually worked out the way that they did, um, these missiles got spotted, and they're able to be engaged at the medium range. Speaking of medium range, what is the range on the South Armenia class? Let's see what we have here. We have an SAN-7. We have three of those, and we have another three there. Uh, they're all in the correct arc. Uh, let's see. They're short-range weapons. Uh-oh. So we can't actually attack those missiles. So those missiles, of course, are going to move into the short-range target now. It's within 12 nautical miles. So we're just going to move them up for it. Now he's in range. So we have six missiles to intercept. Our role to intercept a missile, if you take a look here, we're using just the SAN-7s. Um, AA there is a six or less. So we need six, six or lesses. So let's go ahead and get a big pile of dice here. It's always fun to do. So each six or less will destroy one of these missiles. Keep in mind, uh, he's a sea skimmer, so he might have special properties, but he doesn't in this case. So let's see. I get one, two, three. Three missiles are destroyed out of that pack, which means now these are going to move to the very short range, which puts it within uh, four nautical miles, actually. We're going to have to track that real quick, make sure we're in the right arc here. Uh, four nautical miles, got to be about there. And now he's in the very short range bracket. So he's, the missiles are somewhere in here. So we get to attack them again. This is the advantage of getting that early detection, by the way. So we're going to go ahead and check that again. So we get our six dice against the three. Pretty sure we're going to be successful here. So we have one, two missiles get shot down. So that's very problematic. This guy, by the way, has just dropped 12 missiles on this. So um, we now need to hopefully engage him with some of our other very short-range equipment. And that includes the two 130s, and that also includes our SeaWiz system. So we're going to use the 130s first. It's a 4 or less. I only get 2. So we need a 4 or less. Yes, okay. So the missile got shot down by the 130mm cannon and does not hit the Wichita. Ooh, that was close. So, um, of course, these guys are all sitting there clapping and everything like that. And now we end that first combat turn. But it's not over yet. Now we're going to go ahead and place missiles down on the table. This time, the South Armenia is going to return the favor. So uh, let's see what we have here. We have SSN-22 missiles. They're surface skimmers. They're heavy ordnance. They are deadly. So um, we're going to go ahead and fire. We'll go ahead and grab another red missile. How many of those do we actually get here? We get quads, so we're going to launch eight. Forget ammunition. Ammunition's expensive. All right, so we're going to go ahead and launch eight. We don't know what we're attacked with. 
So it's going to move in. So he has no way, since his radar is off, to know that he's about to get ambushed by these weapons. So he doesn't actually spot them until they move into the very short range bracket, which puts them right here. So that would mean he only gets one turn to try to attack them. If his radar was active, he might have detected them sooner. But in this particular case, he's in a world of hurt to try to block that incoming attack. So what does he have here? He has an SAN4. We get one of those. And we also get the 57 millimeters. So it's a 2 less for the 57, a 5 less for the AA. Uh, keep in mind, some weapons are not good at engaging uh, sea skimmers. These are, so we're good to go. So we get one dice for the missile launcher. We get one dice for the 57 millimeter. The missile launcher, um, let me look at it one more time, needs a five or less. It gets a nine, so it misses. So he needs a two or less for the 57 millimeter. He gets a four. So that means eight missiles are going to smack into the Nanuchka. Ouch, that's going to hurt. So how do you do damage? Damage is actually really cool. So what we do is we take a look at what kind of weapon that was that we just fired. It is considered a heavy. So that means what we're going to do is we're going to take one dice for each of the missiles that hit him. And then we're going to roll against this really convenient little chart they give you at the bottom here. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can actually see it. And we take a look at what he is. So this is the number we have to roll underneath to do something. So in this case, if we roll any uh, 8 or less, we uh, destroy him outright. If we do a 9 or less, he's crippled. A 10 or less, he gets heavy damage. So um, unless... <laughs> I don't think this is not going to not, not end well not. So we just need something that's a... Oh, there we go. Yeah, so this guy explodes. I mean, I can't do it, but you imagine a gigantic splash like that as, you know, eight gigantic anti-ship missiles snap him in two. And that also means that these guys get to kind of creep cruising right on out of the straight. So that's kind of how shipwreck is played. Uh, submarines and aircraft are handled a little differently, but um, we're going to leave that out for now because it tends to slow things down a little bit, but might be worth looking at another day. Enjoy!